Hello, my name is Brenda and my channel is Handwork Maniac. Welcome. <clears throat> Today is May 14th, 2022. I have one item of business, two cross-stitch finishes, six cross-stitch new starts. I'll talk about the cross-stitch projects I worked on since the last video and then some stitchy related stuff that I purchased to show you. Well, not a purchase to use, but I can show you. <laughs> okay. Business. There is a crazy woman stitching, no G, stitching, I N, retreat from September 15th to the 17th this year, 2022, in Casper, Wyoming. It's put on by my friend, Misty Connolly. She is hosting it. You may have met her at StitchCon. I met her at StitchCon in 2019. She was also at Stitch West this last year. You may have met her there, if you were there. Um, if she's, It's a smaller retreat, like around 40 people. Um, if you are, she still has a few spots left. If you are interested in going, I'll be going um, several of my friends, my daughters, my daughter Stitchy Marie and my daughter-in-law Hannah. We're all planning on going. So if you are interested at all in going, you can contact Misty Connolly. Her Instagram name is M-C-O-N-N-E-L-L-Y 69, mconnolly69, or you can email her at crazywomanstitchingretreat at gmail.com. Stitchin' without a G. Or I will put a link to the registration form in the description box below and you can just click on that. It's a Google form and you can let her know that you're interested in registering. Please come, it's gonna be so much fun. All right, finishes. Oh, I had two finishes, <laughs> I left it over there. Let's see if I can move things so I don't trip on everything. <laughs> oh, what can I put behind it? Okay, this is Winter by the Cricut Collection. I showed it to you last time and told you I was close to a finish and I did finish. And it's on 32 count. Mm, a gray, I remember. I will put it in the description box below. I also made a few. I used the color conversion from Shepherd's Bush in Ogden where they used an overdyed color for those big letters. The rest of it is the same DMC and Krynik. And then that, this T right here was, a, they had it charted as a color that was very similar to this N. So I changed it to a different color and I'll put that in the description box below as well. But it was lots of fun. Stitch along with my friend Sharon. That one is finished. We want to do all four seasons. We have three done so far. While we have left is summer. So I think we'll start that in July. And I'm going to put them on some kind of a metal sign or tray or something with magnets from Hobby Lobby. <clears throat> I'll attach magnets to the back so I can switch the seasons out. And then I also finished Day and Night by Long Dog Samplers. It is on 40 count, picture this plus, Valor. <laughs> I started it in 2018. It was a mania start in 2018. Let's see if I can read it backwards. Day and night, sun and moon, air and light, everyone must have and none can buy. 
I love the little people at the bottom. I love the houses. This fabulous church, cathedral. <clears throat> It was a lot of fun. Used the called for DMC colors. One strand of floss over two fabric threads on 40 count. Okay, those are the two finishes. And then apparently I had a serious case of starditis. Like every floss tuber that I watched, whatever they were showing, I needed to start that right now. I don't know what it was in April, but I ended up <clears throat> needing to start several things. So first I was watching Calico Whimsy, a floss tube channel, and she was doing a root parade on all of her dimensions kits. And I thought, oh, those are gorgeous. I love kits. I really need to start some more kits, <laughs> buy some more kits. I bought some more kits. And she showed her Lenarte kit, Four Seasons, that looks like this. She just had a little bit done up here, and I just thought, oh, that is so pretty. I have not done a Lenarte Mar Margeline Baston. I love her designs. I've not stitched one yet. So I decided to start in the middle and then during each season, I'll work on that season for however many years it takes me to finish it. So I started right here and worked a little bit right here on the way over here to spring. I'll start on the summer side after the summer solstice. So it's the kit fabric. And the fabric it came with was um, 28 count even weave and either a white or an off-white even weave. So I decided to go ahead and use that kit fabric. I love even weave. <laughs> this is what I have so far. <laughs> These are magnetic cable minders that I got on Amazon. I really like the Smart and Cool brand ones because they're very strong. I have bought some that are not very strong. These are Smart and Cool. So I started, this is that bouquet of flowers, and then I started moving out this way up here to the, the spring box will be up here. And this is what I have done so far. This bag is from Cross Stitch Fancies. Beautiful uh, William Morris design. And then it does have quite a bit of floss because it's a very large pattern. Huge, as a matter of fact. Give me, did I write the stitch count down anywhere? It's big, but it has a lot of colors of floss. So I've been playing around. I don't usually use floss tags, but it was just easier with this pre-cut floss already in the kit to do floss tags instead of bags. So I've been playing around with making floss tags. These are playing cards that have the flowers, wildflowers of Utah on them. So I trimmed them and punched them so that they could be floss cards for this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to stack all of these. And then I was watching Stitching at the Cabin. Mother and daughter, they are fun to watch. And they, a year ago, started this Stony Creek Afghan, Christmas Afghan, called Christmas Village. And a year ago, I, 
around a year ago. I'm not sure how long ago. Um, they both started it and they've showed it a couple times since as they've worked on it and it's so pretty and I just kept thinking oh and then I ran across this pattern again I was just doing some online shopping and thought okay I have to do that I have to start the hook so I'm using the called for DMC which is quite a bit because you have to use four strands of floss and it's huge it's an afghan I bought the 11 count I think it is the called for fabric from Stony Creek it's um Lugana I believe it's 11 count Lugana it's whatever the called for fabric is and I have it on 11 by 14 is that right yes 11 by 14 key snaps no eight no no 11 by 14 sorry 11 by 14 Q snaps that do not, it won't fit in my lap stand because it's just so heavy with all this rolled up fabric. I rolled up the sides of the fabric on the top and the bottom, rolled it up until I got to the edge and then used these magnetic cable ties to hold it out of my way. These ones are the smart and cool ones. I think they're like seven and a quarter inches. But these were some I found that were 12 inches on Amazon uh, magnetic cable ties to hold this heavy. It was holding the heavy fabric better out of my way. And that's what I have so far. I also put this one on floss tags. Some of the colors call for 20 skeins of floss. So I don't have all the floss on here. If there's one that's, I just put, I think I put four skeins. If there's more than four skeins of that floss, I just put four on the card. These were playing cards that were green on the back and they're also green on the front. Let's see if I can find a face card for you, they're fun. I just thought they were pretty and I like the weight of a playing card to make a floss tag. Something I tried. It was fun. I cut them really long lengths because you have to use four strands of floss. So I cut them. It's probably two yards long and then I'll take two strands out, fold it over and then I have and do a loop start and then I have four strands. And because it's so massive, I have it in this creative country girl, Tammy Blaylock. Her website is creative country girl in this huge. I think this might be like <clears throat> 17, 14 by 17 bag. It's a really her large, large, large bag, but it has been perfect for this project, especially since it has this big pocket in the front because that's where I put all the floss is in there. <laughs> I will put that back later. Okay, that was the new start number two. Number three, I was watching Sarah, the Stitch and Mommy, and my friend Colette, and several others of you have started this the montage series from Pain Free Crafts. Artwork by Janet Stever. There's a spring montage, a summer montage, a fall and a winter. But it is a full coverage design, quite large, lots of colors, pain-free crafts. You can get them there. They are beautiful. And so they started spring on spring solstice. They're gonna start summer on summer solstice, fall and then winter, and then just keep working on them until they have them done. They are really pretty. And then Sarah mentioned that you can also get the kit from Jan Lynn, but it looks a little, the colors are a little different and they've designed it a little different. So it doesn't have as many colors in it. And I thought, oh, I want to start that. I want to start that. I want to start that. But I, I knew that four new full coverage designs was going to be too much for me. So I went with the Jan Lynn kit. So here's the Jan Lynn kit and the pain-free crafts version. 
side by side. You can see the difference in colors. This Janlin kit, do I have the cover in here? Let me pull the cover out. So here's the kit. It comes with 14 count white Ada. So they've done it on a white background. Do I have this upside down? No, okay. <laughs> Which you can see here. <clears throat> it's a white background. So they've changed the colors a little bit to go with this white background and they don't have as many colors in here as this has on the Pain Free Crafts version. So I thought I want to do the kit, but I want it to look more like this. So one of the first things I wanted to do was make the fabric more this background color that's on this one. And I wanted to do it on 36 count linen with two strands because I really like doing kits that way. So I had this 36 count light mocha from Zweigert. And I wanted to make it more like the color in that, the Pain Free Crafts version. So I didn't have anything and I really wanted it to be that color. I have never dyed fabric. I have never wanted to dye fabric, but I thought, okay, I'm going to try dyeing fabric to get the color that I want. So I watched the video by Jen Upton on the Caterpillar Cross Stitch YouTube channel. Excellent video. How to do dyeing with the modeling. Uh, the scrunch method. So I used, I watched that video, I used Rit Marigold liquid dye and I did the two tablespoons that she used in her video per one cup of water and did the scrunch method like she showed and it was a little too, loved the color, it's the perfect color but it's a little too dark on this little swatch. I just did some swatches and then I took my real piece of fabric that I was going to stitch on and thought okay I'm just all I'll cut it in half. I'll do one tablespoon of dye for a cup of water and I just dyed the fabric thinking it'll be fine. And it was still a little too dark. So I did my favorite trick of throwing it in the washing machine right away with OxyClean White Revive and ran it through a washing machine cycle to lighten it up a little bit. So it went from the Zweigart Light Mocha to this color. And I'll show you. So this is the fabric I started with. This is the base color. This is the one that was too dark. And then it was still a little too dark, so I ran it through the washing machine with White Revive. OxyClean White Revive. And I love the color. Love it. I think it is perfect to be more like this picture. Which, who knows if that's what the real, what the real stitching would look like. You know how photos are never quite the same. But that was, I loved this photo, so that was the color I was going for. I'm using the kit threads that came with it um but this brown these um checkerboard squares back here the brown that they had for that was a really pinky brown so i did change this checkerboard color to a different color and i chose for these darker ones over here it was just a darker shade of these squares so i chose a different color for that when i get over there because i wanted it to be um like I wanted it to kind of blend into the background fabric like this does. So I chose a color that was very similar to the background fabric. Otherwise, I'm using the kit floss. I may change this purple and I may change this background brown right here because there's this very dark and very. Um, I'll see if I like that purple color or not. And then there is a lot of back stitching in this that I, some of it I am going to do, but some of them I'm going to leave off and see how I like it so it looks more like this one. 
I don't think it needs all of the back stitching that this kit is calling for. So there's my start on the Jan Lin Spring Montage Kit. So this is 36 count linen that was light mocha and I've dyed with marigold liquid writ dye. And then I'm using the kit floss except for a couple of colors that I've changed. I'll put that in the description box below, the numbers. These kits are still available. You can buy them new, you can buy them on eBay. Here is the summer. Here is winter. Oh, sorry, this one's summer with the watermelon. This one is fall. You knew that when I was showing it to you. You were yelling at me, weren't you? Oh, and what did I do with? Hmm. Oh, maybe they're right here. So just for my own reference, when I stitched them, I did a side-by-side -side chart of each one of them. And these Janet Stever artwork from Pain Free Crafts, they all have that similar background color. So I think I might do them all with that same recipe of dye and the same fabric. All the kits come with white Ada, but I'm going to do mine on the over dyed 36 count linen that I'm doing. And probably same thing, I'm, I might not do all of the back stitching that it calls for and I might adjust a couple of the colors as I go. Here are the fall ones side by side. Just changing that background color of the fabric, I think, made a huge difference. And here's the winter. Or you can stitch the Pain Free Crafts version, the full coverage, and totally enjoy that as well. I think these kits are 142 by 183. I have that written on a little sticky note. I think that's what the count ended up being on the spring one that I started. So much more doable for me than a full coverage that's probably like, I don't know if they're 200 by something by 300 or 300 something by 400, something big with lots of colors. And they're gorgeous. They are so gorgeous. Okay, and then I was watching Sarah Stitching Mommy again, and she's doing, she has, you know how she does Mill Hill Mondays, and she has just one frame, and she switches out. She has going to do several, and as she gets them done, she's just going to switch them out in the frame every month, the stuff that would go with that month. So I have a white frame and a black frame. She's doing the button and beads ones, and I love those. So I thought I could put that in my office at work. That would be so cool. And I could work on them during my lunch half hour every day. So I've been doing that. So I have Mill Hill lunch <laughs> every day at work. So I started. Oh, and then Victoria's crafty room was showing a magazine and she was showing, I've looked at it before, but she showed this one. There was an ad for this on the back and I thought, oh, you're right. That is so gorgeous. I need to, that's the first one I want to stitch, which is not a button and beads kit. It is Mill Hill. It's a Mill Hill floral fantasy. There's four of them in this line. This one is called Floral Yellow 2 and it was my favorite one. So I decided to start with this one, which is not actually the same size as the button and beads. Those are six by six. This one, the they'll fit in a six by six frame. This one, the design size is seven and three quarters by seven and three quarters. So then I realized, oh, I can still stitch it. I'll just get, Mill Hill also has, sells an eight by eight frame. So I'll get that one in just between, whichever one I'm showing that month, whether it's the, if it's the six by six or the eight by eight, I'll just switch them out. Clear as mud, right? And this one did come with 
14 count yellow Ada to stitch it on. This one is not on perforated paper. This one came with fabric. These floral fantasy ones come with fabric. But I had this. Twenty-eight count um, opalescent fabric. It's chime. The color is chime, and it's twenty-eight count, and it is opalescent. That my daughter Marie, Stitchy Marie, that's her YouTube channel, purchased and didn't use, and gave it to me. And it was the perfect size, and I thought it looked really nice with this. You can see that it's just got a little bit of yellow modeling on it. This is where I am so far. I'm doing the beads since the whole thing will fit right here inside this 11 by 11 Q-snap with space to spare. I'm just beading as I go because I love seeing the beads on there. Turn it sideways, you might be able to see the beads a little better. But that has been a lot of fun to work on during my lunch. And as I get them done, I'll display them in my office using the kit floss on this a floss holder that my friend Sharon gave me and these they used to be called tacky bobs but those went out of um, they weren't making them anymore so now there's a tacky bill that's just the same that you can buy it's like a jewel case like a CD case and it opens up and it's sticky on the inside this meal hill kit came with two packages of beads they put them in two packages so that the colors would be easier to sort so this is package a and this is package b i think there's two colors in that package and two colors in this package because there were four colors and they stick on there because it's sticky and then you can just pick one up at a time with your bead. And then if you knock this off the table or your cat steps on it, which mine did once, stepped on it, picked up its foot, couldn't get it off, shook it really hard and it flew across the room. And you know, I might've lost maybe five beads off of it, but the rest stayed on. So highly recommend if you're doing beading, these are fabulous. And then in between working on it, you can just close it up and the beads are safe in there and you can throw it back in your bag. All right, start number four. <laughs> Blitz Stitch, Brian at Blitz Stitch, his YouTube channel, a year ago, I think in May, was thinking about starting Miss Hathaway's Garden. He had seen it at a stitching night he had at the attic, I believe. He saw someone else working on it and he showed it and said he was thinking about starting it. And then he didn't start it. He chose not to start it, started some other things instead. And when he showed it, I just thought, oh, that is gorgeous. I need that. So I purchased it, found it on Amazon, Pegasus Publications. The publisher still sells them. All of these, the artist is Marty Bell. This adaptation is by Mildred Hennant Hedgepath, made into a cross stitch. And there is a whole line of these cross stitch kits from Marty Bell paintings from 19, I know it says in here, 1995 is this one, the copyright. So it is like a heaven and earth design, just like that. It's full coverage, almost full coverage. There's a little bit of sky that isn't, lots of colors. It isn't hand-drawn chart, it is a printed chart. 128 colors. They don't even all fit on there. Some of them have to be on the back. They even made a little card for you to cut out or take with you to the store because it's got Anchor, DMC, and JP Coats. Whichever one you're buying, you can take this little thing with you so that you know which colors you need to buy. 128. 
So there was a couple times when I wanted to start it, but I'd get it out and go, oh, I'd have to pull 128 colors. I just, I don't have the energy for that today, so I put it back away. <laughs> well, then I realized, as I was spending way too much time on eBay, that you can buy it as a kit as well from the sells the kit. Jenlin. It's a Jenlin kit. So it would come with pre-cut lengths of the 128 colors. And I thought, well, that's worth it. It's They're out of print, but they're still available on... I got mine on eBay. And I thought... I priced it out and thought what it would cost if I had to buy all of those skeins of colors. And thought, okay, it's worth it to me. I'm buying it. <laughs> so I bought the kit so I could have all the floss. It came with um, some 14 count, 14 count light blue Ada for this guy because this guy is not stitched. But I decided to do it on 36 count. Let's see if I wrote it down somewhere. I thought I did. Hmm. All right, it'll be in the description box below what color I chose. It's a 36 count over dyed blue. And it goes this way. <laughs> it's my friend Colette and Sarah the Stitching Mommy do the typewriter method when they do full coverage so I wanted to try that so I've been trying that and and I'm enjoying it there is a new app oh this needle minder I got from my daughter-in-law Hannah from her Etsy store Sunshine Mama's Designs is her Etsy store she sells needle minders and parking bobbins if you do the parking method on full coverage to wind your thread around them um, there's a new app called, well, I don't know how new it is, new to me, Markup RXP. So Markup, one word, M-A-R-K-U-P, and then the letters RXP. And it's for Android or Apple, either one, you can get it both in both. It is $10 a year, it's a yearly subscription, but I think you can get it for your first month for free to try it out. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. <laughs> I just heard about it and wanted to try it. I still love Pattern Keeper. If I can get a pattern to go into Pattern Keeper, I will use that every time. That is a fabulous app. But for this project, it's a paper, old paper pattern from 1995. It's eight pages of chart in the pattern. Um, and I was just so wishing that I could get that into something like Pattern Keeper. Well, I've been playing with it in Markup RXP. I think I'm going to be able to make it work. He has a YouTube channel. He has fabulous videos, lots of videos. It is a very powerful program, so you have to watch all of the videos that you're going to need to watch for what you're doing. Um, and it will select for the symbol. You can do a symbol search, and it will find the symbols for you. You just have to play around with it a little bit to figure out um, how sensitive you want it to search for that symbol, if it's going to get everything that sort of looks like that symbol, or if it's not going to get all of that symbol, you have to get it right at the right spot. But so far it's working great. I've been very impressed. I just need to work with it a little bit longer to get it to work the way I want it to work. But I think I'm going to be able to get that so that I can do a symbol search for that one, which will be so fabulous. Otherwise, it's just the same as very similar to Pattern Keeper. You highlight the symbol, you mark it off as you go. You can, you do have to assign the colors manually, but then it will mark it off with the color that you stitched it. It's been a lot of fun. Highly recommend at least trying it out. Okay, and then start number six. Are we on number six? Quite a while ago, like a year ago, my daughter Marie, bossy daughter, Stitchy Marie, said she was interested in starting Consider the Lilies. And I was like, oh, okay, maybe we should do that together. And then just recently, 
it came up again on my Instagram feed and I thought, oh, so I asked Marie, do you still want to start this? She's like, sure. So I started this one. I know a lot of you are stitching this one. It's by Heartstring Samplery, Consider the Lilies. I'm doing mine on 46 count flax linen. And that's what I have so far. It's a lot of fun to work on. Okay, I think that's all of the new starts. Oh, goodness. Maybe I should need to stop watching Floss Tube until this attack of starditis stops. All right. My whip go pieces for April <clears throat> were the new normal, and my goal on that is a finish, which did not happen yet, but I will keep working on it. It's a yearly goal. I did get quite a bit done on it though in April and this is what it looks like so far. I worked on this section over here, started on this middle bubble. This is Long Dog Samplers and she has a fabulous description in the pattern of all the things she put in this to symbolize our new normal in the pandemic. It's a very fun pattern. It will look like this when it is finished. It's a monochromatic pattern. I'm choosing my own colors. I'm using Sulky 12 weight cotton thread for this, just one strand of the 12 weight cotton on 40 count white linen. One strand of the silky 12 weight over two threads of fabric. So I will keep working on that. And then my other whip go piece for April was hoity toity. And my goal was 20 hours. And I did get 20 hours in on it. I worked over here. This is also a pattern by Long Dog Samplers. I am using a silk conversion by Mrs. Sadas Silks, M-I-S-S-U-S-S-E-D-A-S, -S 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 -S. or S-E-D-U-S, I can never remember. Her silks are fabulous. She has a conversion for this particular chart. So I have, I bought her silks. I've added, I took out the one pink color and added a couple of reds. Um, I think I added a light brown. And I changed a couple of colors to a different symbol, but otherwise I'm using her conversion and I'll put the, the details in the description box below. This is 40 count mallow linen and I'm using one strand of silk over two fabric threads. And then in May, oh, wrong one. My WIPCO numbers in May. If you want more information about WIPCO, that is Jessie Marie Does Stuff. She has a Floss Tube channel and an Instagram account. She runs that activity. This is Colors of Water by Der Werkstatt for Historisch Stickmuster. It's a German company. Oops, sorry. Color side. And the name of the pattern is Die Farben des Wassers. 
which translates to the colors of water. The called for threads are, the company is Avera Soie, the kind of floss is Soie d'Alger, their Soie d'Alger line. And I'm using one strand of silk over two fabric threads on 46 count antique white linen. And my goal on this was a finish as well. I don't know what I was thinking. My goal on the new normal is a finish. Oh, I told you that. So I'll keep working on this, but I did get quite a bit done. I worked over, finished this one and started on this one. Beautiful pattern. And my other Whipco piece for May, or my second one, is Serenity Harbor by the Bay Needle Arts. And my goal on this one is 12 hours. I'm almost done. I started filling in some water right here, finished up all of the edges over here so I knew where the water went. I am using the DMC that it calls for, except for a couple places where there's big blocks of one color like this water and some of the grass down here I've changed to over dyeds, mostly silks. This water and the light and the darker color of the water are dinky dyes. I'll put those in the description box below. But that's been fun to work on. Okay, and then I did Mania this year in March instead of May. And that was where I started. I started in 2018. And in 2018, I did a new start. Well, I had four or five whips in there, but the rest of them were new starts every day from the 1st through the 18th. And then in 2019, I did the first 19 days. 2020, I did the first 20 days. So now we're up to 20. 2021, I didn't, I started it, but didn't get all the days filled in. If I am doing the blimey cat method, which is Brittany from Ingleside Imaginariums, um, where if you finish a piece on the, the one you started on the 5th of May, if you finish it, then the next time the 5th of May comes around, you can start a new one on that day. If you didn't finish it, then that just stays on May 5th every year during Mania until you finish it. And I work on them throughout the year as well. I'd like to, especially all the new starts, I like the smallish ones, medium sized, I like to assign them to a certain month of the year so that they get a focus month to work on them and hopefully finished before the next mania. Oh, and I did it in March this year because I realized May is crazy for me and that worked really well. March is a quiet month, but then when I got to May this year, I had, it. It didn't feel the same in March as it does in May when everyone else is working on Mania and we're close to the end of the school year and it's a much more exciting month. So even though it worked really well to have it in March, I had more time to stitch. I think I'll go back to doing it in May just because it feels better to me to do it in May. And I was thinking about just redoing all of them. Did I did it in March and then I was just going to redo them all on those same days in May. But I wasn't feeling like doing that in May, so I haven't done that. <laughs> The piece, all that to say, the piece that was assigned to April from my mania, it was a new start this year, is called Primavera in Sita by Coracete Agogo. She's Italian. It's a cute little city, spring in the city, all these cute rabbits. 
lots of pinks and corals. I love this chart. And I focused on the, that one in April. It was a little too big to finish in one month, so it just got lots of hours on it. This is the middle of the chart, and then this is the panel to the side. This is the called for DMC colors on 46 count natural by Zweigart, one strand of floss over two fabric threads. And then my mania focus piece for May is the flower shop by Thistles. This one is also on 46 count natural one strand of floss over two fabric threads with the called for colors. I started right here in the middle, so I'm working on this part of the store, the flower store. And it is also one strand of floss over two fabric threads, one over two. So I'll be trying to spend a lot of time on this one throughout the rest of May, see how much of it I can get done. I need to do some back stitching on these cactus in the cacti in the window. And then Sometimes I get a daily 30 minutes. I call it the daily 30 piece. Some months I do better than others. On Lost No More, this is a Dimensions Gold Kit. The artwork is by Greg Olson. Nope. I want the magnet. Oh, I've been working up here in this in the tree section, getting this background filled in. That's been fun to see some more colors up there. I'm doing the on the kit fabric, which is a tan, light tan colored Ada. 18 count Ada and the kit floss. And then I have three monthly stitch alongs that I participate in. This one is My Home in the Garden that I'm doing with a group of friends. Colette, the Highway Stitcher is her channel. Becca, My Stitchy Home, Becca Clash, My Stitchy Home is her channel. These lines are where we divided it up into 12 sections. We will have it done by October. We started it at Stitch West last October. Mine is on 40 count alabaster linen. And I'm using the called for Gloriana silks with one strand of silk over two fabric threads. If I can straighten that out, there we go. So I finished the May section, started working the border down a little bit to kind of get a jump because those sections at the bottom are going to be a little, take a little more time. Love the little bee scap. That was fun. Oh, sorry. It's My Home in the Garden by Hello from Liz Matthews. Beautiful, beautiful pattern.
And then there is, oops, Home Sweet Home Stitch Along by By the Bay Needle Arts. She sends you one little section each month in your email. Started in November. And this was the section I did this month. Comes out on the 8th every month. So this was, this came out on the 8th of April. I haven't started on the one that came out on the 8th of May yet. That would be this one. Mine is on 46 count vintage by Be Stitch Me with the called for DMC colors. One strand of floss over two fabric threads. One over two. That one has been fun. And then the last stitch along that I do is with my friend Sharon. And it is Kingdom of Books. It's a Russian kit, a kit from Russia. This company translates to make it with your own hands. It came with 14 count Ada. I am using an 18 count over dyed Ada. I am not stitching this background wood. I'm just stitching a little bit of the shadow around each house and then I'm not stitching this whole shelf underneath just a couple of rows of the shadow right underneath the books. And we're trying to do a half of a book per month. It's going to take us three years. We started a year and a half ago. So this month, towards the end of the month, I'll work on it again and we get to, we're to the middle, that middle section. I'm so excited. The titles are in Russian in the kit. I had a friend translate them to English for me because I wanted them to know what they said. So I'm stitching them in English mostly. And they are all books about the Netherlands. And I believe they're meant to look like the houses along the canals in the Netherlands that are tall and skinny and they look like books. That is all of the projects I worked on since the last time I made a video. So now let's do haul and stitchy kindness. My good friend gave me this chart for my birthday. Stitching Summer by Twin Peak Primitives. Isn't that cute? Look at those whales. And look how the spools, they're like fishing off the spools. I love that, spools of thread. So cute. With these beautiful scissors. And this cute little tin. Let's see if we can get it right side up. So nice. Okay, and then I bought more button and beads kits so that I would have enough to do, you know, several months in my office. This one is not a button and beads. It will be a little bit bigger. It will have to go in the eight by eight, I believe. This one is out on a limb series. Oh no, it'll fit. It's five and a half by five and a half, but it's the out on a limb series and it's called Aqua Bird and it comes with brown Ada, not perforated paper. I love that one. This one is, is buttons and beads, Tree of Life. All the button and beads ones, I think, come with the perforated paper. This 
one is Ladybug on Daisy. This one is Butterfly, it's a Laurel Birch, Butterfly Capri. This one is Citrus. This one is Cabana Beach. Sunflower. Mouse House. Winter Glow. Herb Garden. And Pomegranates. I had some birthday money to spend, you could probably tell. And I showed you the frames that I bought. Oh, and I also bought this one, which is a bigger one. It is on perforated paper, but it's a bigger one. It's seven by seven, so it will fit in the eight by eight frame. It's one of their sticks series, and it's Wish on a Star. Love the colors in that one. And then I was at my local needlework store, the Craft Center of Fine Stitchery in Salt Lake City. And they had these Riley Blake bags with the Riley Blake Utah fabric. It's got a zipper top. It's green on the inside. It has this little pocket on one side. So cute. So I needed that, of course. While we were there, Marie and I went together. We bought all the floss for Consider the Lilies. That was fun. And then, you know, I was spending, I was on eBay, I had birthday money, so I bought some more kits. This is a gold collection, Petite's Enchanted Cottage. This is another Lenarte kit called MB Collage. It also has four seasons. This is a Luca S, also called Enchanted Cottage. It's gorgeous. This is a Luca S called Dreaming of a White Christmas. I saw somebody, I don't remember what I was watching, but I saw somebody's whip of this. If anybody knows who it is on YouTube that's stitching this, let me know, because I can't remember where I saw it, but it was beautiful. Might not have been this one, it might have been her. She has one that's very similar that's a teal colors, but it's Christmas as well, living room. Might have been that one. This one is Letty, Letty Stitch, and it's called Window Seat. The weather's gorgeous today outside. It makes me want to start this one. But I will refrain. I think I've started enough. And then this is another... Um, oh, what did I just say her name was? Marty Bell, another Marty Bell kit by Jen Lynn. This is a Wishing Well, I think. Wishing Well Garden. 
comes with all the gloss. And then Sanctuary. Another Marty Bell kit. I think that is everything. I hope you have a fabulous May and get lots of stitching done. And we'll see you again later. Bye-bye.